a very, very good morning to you and uh, welcome to Morning Live as we bring this broadcast to you from, uh, this is Howick, this is the Nelson Mandela Capture Site. Isn't this a beautiful way to start our Friday morning broadcast? Yes, isn't that stunning? All right, welcome everybody. What a fantastic day. I've got the minister who's going to walk into shot as well, but I'm just going to set this all up for you. This, of course, is World Tourism Day, and South Africa has decided that this is the place that they're going to be hosting the main event for the country, and this is actually really such an apt place. But I'm not going to go into it because I have got our tourism minister who's with us, and it's so nice. I, I honestly can't think of a better place to wrap up Tourism Month, wrap up Heritage Month, and of course celebrate World Tourism Day right here at the Nelson Mandela Capture Site. Good morning to you. Good morning, Leon, and good morning to the viewers of Morning Life. We are indeed excited. This is a perfect site for us to host this day, especially with the themes linking tourism with jobs. Yeah. Think about it. 15 years down the line, there was nothing here. Today we have a site that is active. People are working. Activities, it has brought life to the community when within Midlands. Yeah. Which is, which is so wonderful because this is a beautiful part of the country, it really is. While I was driving here, you just see all these little shops and little coffee shops and little chocolate bars and waffle stops and all these gorgeous things that of course are creating jobs all around something like this. Talk to us about this, this capture site because I know that there's a museum which I think is still getting an upgrade and is going to be revealed more. But, but talk to us about this site. No, definitely the site is a site that... Um if we remember all of us, President Nelson Mandela was arrested here in the disguise of David Mutsamai. He tried to say he's David and they arrested him because information was out that it is, it is indeed him in that car. He was arrested here, he vanished out of our sight. 27 years and he remaged again. So if you look at the sculpture and those who have done it. It says it shows you that you see him in the public face, he vanishes. As you move in, he reappears after. But now with him gone, it's almost like when you walk through, yesterday I was here again, looking, doing the preparation, it's almost like you connect him spiritually to say he's gone, but he's reappearing within us as we live individually as South Africans. This is very a, a serious mom momentous for us to be able to celebrate here but to link with who we are Lian, I link this to a lot of things in our country where people sometimes lose hope and reminding South Africans where we come from by being in the site as part of Tourism Day is to say, let's look back. We've gone through a lot of painful past, but we've merged as a prosperous nation. Whatever difficulties we have, as, as long as we remember where we come from, yeah. we will be able to overcome and do live within those values. The, indeed, the museum we've done, it's beautiful. Actually, the shooting, the way they've done the videos, and the table that tells about the life of Dada and linking it, linking the whole history in terms of previously how ANC was formulated, his role in the Youth League and eventually until he was captured in Robben Island and leading to democracy and his role post-democracy. So it tells you the story of Tata, but it links because he's always seen himself not as an individual but linked to other leaders as being part of a collective. So it tells that collective story. Mm -hmm. It was very nice to see some of the pictures. I mean, you'd not even recognize some of the people who are appearing on the pictures when you compare them today. Yeah. But it's beautiful to see it. Yes, there's expansion that is going to happen continuing. There is new uh, exhibition, there's plans to do sites for training as well, so that when even when young people come here, schools come, they are able to see value. We give them tasks so that they can play. So it's more heritage, tourism and exhibition. Yeah. So Which we're looking at even expanding, um, building the entrance as well. So that is, we were talking yesterday when we passed, because when you pass at night, it's dark. Yeah. So one yeah. of the things we would want to do is to have the lighting. That so that even if you pass at night, you can be able to still see. Yeah. Which is important because you, you could just miss this. Yes. And you know, most of the reviews that I read are sort of, we stumbled across this and what an incredible place to come and visit. So we need to get rid of the stumble and make it actually a point for people to come to. Just uh, very quickly, I need to talk about visitors' figures here in South Africa, how tourism is doing. What are we looking like currently? Currently, unfortunately, Lian, I received um, the stats for last month, end of July. We dropped the numbers. Um, we've, we, globally, 
tourism is growing. Everybody is seeing more interest, more people moving. But we're not capturing that. Um, Africa as a whole, out of the whole population that travels, other regions, for example, if you look at Asia, you look at Europe, they're sitting more than 300 million visitors mm -hmm. annually. As Africa, we're sitting at 67 million, as the whole Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa, we're sitting at 10.4, um, as we look at last year's figures, which is not good. And this says to us, we've got so many attractions. We've got beautiful people who love people, who are good hosts as Africa. We've got um, different packages because other regions, when you visit them, they don't have a variety of regions. We've got the Big Five, we've got nature reserves, we've got coastal, we've got townships, we've got... So the package is diverse. Now, part of what we've been doing now in the portfolio is to analyze what are the cost, cost effects, why people sometimes don't come. And one of the things, because I'm talking to South Africans today, and I want to utilize this opportunity and for all of us to understand the impact we do. When we start doing wrong things, or even, and as much as I'm saying, people can protest. People can raise their views, yeah. but we need to learn from that. They find a way of sitting around the table and, and talking about our differences, talking about the challenges we have, and finding solutions. Because when we ban trucks, when we ban shops, these are images that appear in other countries. And that says South Africa is not a destination to come. We do not deserve the visitors that come. We fight for them to come here because we are competing yeah. with everybody else across. Now, when these things happen, they make it difficult for us to be able to compete and bring more numbers. That's why my message to South Africans is that, and if visitors don't come, we lose jobs, we lose economic growth. Every, this is a sector that has been growing very strongly. We're contributing 2.9% into our GDP. We can be able to contribute more. We're contributing enough jobs, actually, as a sector. We've been seeing one of the sectors that has been growing in employing people. And also, even on people who would not ordinarily own a business, are able to own a business in the sector. So the entry requirements is very low to allow for everybody, whether it's young person, whether it's women, they are able to enter black background, no education. If you have a facility that you can own a BNB, you own a BNB, we come in, we support you, we give you training, you run a successful business. Now, these are the jobs that are critical and South Africans need to understand that the more we deal we destroy this image the more people will be out of their jobs so we've got to understand the impact and the link on what we are doing to the jobs to the economy and unless we can make that link we'll think that i can do this in a little corner when a tourist is traveling lien to this side and then there's a protest that makes that tourist not to arrive and catch their flight on time. This is the message they get to home because they incur costs that they never expected. Now we've got to think about those things and that, this is my appeal. And I'm not saying as a minister we are not cognizant of the challenges, but we are saying to South Africans, think about the impact. Indeed, and the impact of crime, because that's something we didn't get to speak about, but it falls into everything that you're saying is these crime numbers and all the other negative things that are unfortunately hanging over South Africa are scaring tourists away and these are affecting jobs and growth and everything else so there's a lot to work so it's not only the Department of Tourism you need every other department working with you Minister thank you thank you very much for being with us today we'll continue to come here and talk about this site and also tourism in general in South Africa but also focusing here on KwaZulu-Natal but uh, let's quickly go back to Joburg and uh, Simpiwe has got our news headlines for us